Yeah. This is the garden tour. Let's see what we got going on. Start over here. Over here we got a oh, the shadows in there. Bunch of marigolds and sturgeons. Different types of sturgeons growing in this elevated garden bed. This is a flower bed with nasturgums and other stuff. Over here, tomatoes. They're gonna grow up this trellis. Uh, basil. Uh, more nasturgums. They get pretty big. I just love having those things all over the place. Bok choy going to seed. Um, some lettuce back here going to seed. Lemon zest thyme over here. Head lettuce growing in here. Some oregano, some more nasturgums. A little rosemary in the fish mouth just for looks. Over here there's uh, mammoth dill, green beans, baby moses. And over here we've got nasturgums coming up, scented geranium, purple sage, and green beans are going to grow up this trellis here. This is the lettuce bed, looking pretty good. We got uh, strawberries all around the perimeter of this to get some light, and I like strawberries. And in this bed, you can see all kinds of ladybugs over this in this lettuce bed. And I didn't put ladybugs in here, but they really like this lettuce bed. Out of all my other garden beds, I saw a really big one over here. Yeah, there he is. So I've I've probably found you know a good hundred of them or so in here just crawling around. And this is just a mix of lettuce. I've got some mustard greens, some basil hiding in here, some sorrel. Uh, this is some really pretty lettuce. More strawberries around the perimeter of it. And then up here is just my little garden art. My little gnome. And then this is all rosemary. Different types of rosemary. And then more strawberries you can see tucked in all over the place because I like to have those. This is the mustard green bed and this is what happens when it gets hot. It goes to seed which is fine because I want to collect the seed. You can still eat the greens on it. And then down below here, I've got the second stage or second round of mustard greens coming up. They're different. And then I've also got baby asparagus growing down in here. So that's fun. I um, also have like maybe 12 or so asparagus plants down in here. You can see they just grow right through the mustard greens. And sometimes I miss them and they get really big. And so I can't eat them. Over here is my brick bed which is really the way to make a raised garden bed but kale that overwintered it's a little bit different than my other kale garlic purple sage phoenix nasturgums over here lemon balm english lavender peppermint of course my dino kale red russian kale um this is spinach going to seed over here is tricolored sage Deer Creek Oregano, curry, some curry that I clone that's actually growing good. Uh, weeping Rosemary and Rosemary. More just regular nasturgums with a little bit of Phoenix nasturgums back there. The Phoenix nasturgums have like a purple tint to them. Dino Kale. Can't get enough kale. This is a Swiss Shard that's going to seed. And there's more of it back there. There's like three. Some more Swiss Shard going to seed. Some more spinach going to seed. Um, peppermint garlic, nasturgums, more garlic, spearmint, uh, scented geraniums, uh, curly kale over here which is obviously getting ate up by something you can see that and that's what happens when you do organic gardening without any pesticides but that's okay it's just a looper caterpillar I'll get in there and find them later. Siberian kale it does real well it gets pretty big pretty leggy I guess but I think that's how it's supposed to grow this is French lavender, um, onions, peppermint, over here is spearmint, lemon balm, more lemon balm. On the back side I've got strawberries and garlic growing over there. So real quick we'll go over here to my mini greenhouse cold frame. And in here we've got tomatoes and lemongrass and more tomatoes growing in there. Uh, this is my little corner of grass over here, which is fine, but I've got quite a bit of zucchini in here. I'll thin them out as they grow. I just put a bunch of seeds in to increase germination rate. 
Um, and so this is all zucchini and that'll grow up the trellis and fall the sunlight out into the yard over here. And this bed, it's kind of crazy looking, but there's a lot going on in this bed. Uh, it's a more or less a pepper bed, so it takes a while for them to grow up. Well, what I've got in here is I've got radish and it's going to seed. And you can see how it goes to seed over here. It makes these really pretty purple flowers. And uh, what I'll do is collect that radish seed. This is a tomato plant in here on a stake. It's a regular stake and that needs to be trimmed up and have the suckers clipped off. More tomatoes back here. I've got basil all around in this bed. These are cayenne peppers down here. Leaf lettuce, more radish going to seed. Um, garlic and onions over here. Some more leaf lettuce. Another tomato plant and this is actually the tomato plant. Let's see if I can focus in on it uh, with this. Let's not even try to do that. It looks like my center focus on this thing needs to adjust. There we go. It's been out of focus a little bit. Okay, so we've got more radish, more mustard greens, more lettuce, uh, cayenne peppers, and then green peppers in here. I mean, there's always, I always hide herbs in my bed too. A rosemary, purple sage. Over here, shallots, onions is like a defensive perimeter. Lemon balm in here, parsley, more green peppers in here, more basil, leaf lettuce, nasturtiums all over the place. I mean, I just love those things. You got to have those. They're really good. Draw on the ladybugs. But not as much as this lettuce does. They, they really like, are attracted to that lettuce. So this is my uh, permaculture bed. It's probably one of my favorite for this area. It actually looks pretty uniform because... It is uniform. I planted strawberries around the perimeter, 50 strawberry plants, 50 asparagus plants down the center, and they don't really mess with each other. But you can see all the strawberries are starting to go to seed. I've got marigolds in here. I've got some dill, which actually it's mammoth dill, so I'm going to want to kind of pick that out. Lemon balm, marigolds I'm going to thin out. There's arugula in here, um, parsley, a lot of strawberries. i got nasturtiums in here. I uh, forget the name of those ones that have this white color to them. But yeah, asparagus. And so you let your asparagus grow up. Here's a fresh asparagus right here. But this bed's doing really good and this will come back year after year without me really having to worry about it. Just cover the strawberries up with some leaves and all that stuff. So need to do a little bit of weeding in here. Um, not much. And then thin out the arugula, but you can just thin it out by coming and eating it. And so that is the permaculture bed, which I really like. But this is probably the one I spent the most time on, which is my tomato bed, which has the spider web cage. Kind of, it's a different style, but it really works. It has multi-purpose. I got the tomatoes growing up in here. And then around the perimeter, I've got onions and marigolds and basil and lemon balm. And this lettuce is actually live mulch and will attract ladybugs. Apparently, <laughs> they really like that. So I've got, you know, if you're looking at this kind of square shape, one, two, three, four, and a three by three foot space for tomato plants that I'll keep pruned up. And then the lettuce is doing really good. It's not gonna interfere with the roots of the tomato plant so they'll all get along. And as you can see, basil. Oh, and around these posts, I put cayenne uh, peppers and um, jalapenos on, on each post and then like in throughout the garden. So when they get bigger, I can just tie them up to these posts. Or time up to string but yeah transition between regular basil and then red reuben basil because i really like red reuben basil more nasturtiums got to have those all over the place weeping rosemary scented geraniums in there and these scented geraniums are really pretty but that's just my mosquito repellent that i use for a natural mosquito repellent and rub on my skin uh, if you're going to do that you might want to test it on a small spot see if you're allergic to it but most of the time you're not it has a high um, citronella count but not as high as lemongrass and then second is lemon balm. It looks like someone's been eating all my lemon balm. But that's all right. So the tomatoes are doing really good. This I didn't plant. This is actually a tomatillo. And I don't want to grow those this year because I didn't really enjoy the taste of them. And they took a lot longer to go to fruit than anything else in my garden. So uh, as far as space is concerned, and they get pretty big. The tomatillo isn't for me since I'm doing this with limited space. More curry in here that I clone, rosemary, lemon balm, nasturtium, sage. 
So you can get the idea that I really like to have my, my lettuces and my herbs and my rosemary and my sage and my nasturtiums all over the place. Sweeping rosemary. Um, so everything's growing really good. Uh, I got an early start on this. I've been growing stuff since winter and cold frames um, and, and grow lights. So I had this bed was just all from seed though. And then the asparagus and strawberry bed was from roots. Uh, tomatoes uh, have been growing since January, so that's why they're so big already. The rosemary and a lot of these herbs I cloned and kept inside over the winter. These, this bed here has been planted since February. Same thing with the kale bed. The spinach overwintered itself. The sage came back. And the sturgeon was planted from seed. So that's the inside of the garden bed uh, and I'm still you know doing stuff on the outside but I'll give you a real quick like view of overall view of what it looks like oh uh, yeah and that's a little tree fort back there well technically a storage shed with shade cloth and all that stuff so that's just where I like to hang out and I can see that and look at my garden over here on the outside of the fence to give my garden privacy and since the sunlight works with me I put uh, green beans, marigolds, basils, and a mix of flowers. These green beans will grow up, and these are purple green beans because I like how they look. And that's all along here with these rose, or marigolds and dill and basil and all that stuff along here. And the sturgeons will grow up on this trellis and give my garden a little bit more privacy in there, which I don't really care for it to be private. It doesn't bother me. I like to inspire people when they walk by and to see what I'm up to in here but I just like also having using every little bit of room that I can and you can notice that my paths are a little wide and my garden beds aren't that big but that's not what really matters in a small garden like this because you'd rather have room to work around and do stuff in here than to not have any room at all and be squeezing in and, and hurting plants and just it's not very fun so the more room that you have the better but anyways I'll flip this camera around so you can see me. There you go. But I'm Luke, and this is what I do. This is my passion, my hobby, uh, is growing food. Uh, I usually have a lot of extra, so I don't eat it all, but I really enjoy doing this. Um, there's just something about it that's humbling for me. So that is my garden, and that is the garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll do another one of these in a month. About every month I'll do this until winter time, and then I'll show you what I do during winter time. But this way you can watch the garden grow with me. And it's fun. If you're interested, if you live in my area or anything, you want to come check it out, go ahead. I'll, I'll walk you around and give you a little more detailed uh, view on my garden instead of just this. This is just a quick little tour for a video. So, thanks for watching.